Welcome to The Late Show, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Huge... Huge, huge news just this afternoon. Um, while we're in the middle of a humanitarian crisis on our border, in these detention facilities, this afternoon we learned that Customs and Border Protection Commissioner John Sanders is expected to step down. You know what they say. When the going gets tough, the tough go, good luck with that, sucks to be you. <laughs> You gotta blur my whole head. In his resignation email, Sanders didn't explain the reasons for his departure. Hmm, what could they be? <laughs> I certainly hope he didn't lose his job over something as minor as running detention centers that are inhumane, worse than jail, in which young detainees have no access to toothbrushes, toothpaste, or soap. Wow, his next job interview is going to be rough. Okay, uh, John, under special skills, it says, uh, violating the Geneva Conventions. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're just not Chuck E. Cheese material. <laughs> and may I remind you, we terrify children with a giant animatronic rat. <laughs> Trump spoke to reporters in the Oval Office this afternoon, and he denied that he asked Sanders to resign. I didn't speak to him. I don't think I've ever spoken to him, actually. No, we have some very good people running it. And, uh, you know, I don't know anything about it. I hear he's a very good man. I hear he's a good person. I don't know him. I don't think I ever spoke to him. He's, uh, he's a good man. He's a good man. He's a great man. Uh, never spoke to him. This whole thing was his idea. He's a monster. We should try him at The Hague. I guess, I don't know. I've never met him. <laughs> Is that... Do we have... Am I clear on that? I don't... I don't... I don't, spiders, spiders, spiders. He also made uh, mouth sounds with the hole about uh, his concern for children. A lot of these young children come from places that you don't even want to know about, the way they've lived, the way they've been, uh, the way that the poverty that they grew up in. Which is why, just to make them feel at home, we thoughtfully provide squalor. You know, me squalor and su squalor. <laughs> but as terrible as the conditions in his detention center are, Trump believes we have no choice. We have these massive numbers of people trying to get into the United States because of the economy, because we've done so good. But that's one of the problems with doing well. Everybody wants to come in. Uh, ten years ago, five years ago, four years ago, they didn't want to come in. Today, they want to come in. But we can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. It's just like the poem on the Statue of Liberty. You touch my cash, this big bronze bitch will stomp your huddled mass. Okay? Don't make her angry. That's what it says, John. I didn't recall it reading that way. Yes, yeah, the second verse. It, okay. That's the second verse, the second verse, John. Oh, <laughs> but Trump is wrong, and he knows it. This crisis is not some mistake caused by a sudden rush to the border. People who work down there say it's a result of a failed gamble on the part of the Trump administration that a succession of ever harsher border policies would deter the flood of migrants coming from Central America. And it's not Trump's only failed gamble. His original idea for the border was the Trump Taj Matrocity and Child <laughs> Hotel. You know, you know, failed. You know, the fourth the 4th of July is next week, folks, and um, I'm happy to say I love our country. I love America. I believe, I believe in my heart of hearts, our great country is the last best hope for all mankind. And what makes us great is what we believe in. All men are created equal. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Charmin. Charmin, enjoy the go. But here's the problem with high ideals. You actually have to live up to them. And with these kids on the border, we're not just failing to live up to our own standards. Michael Scott Moore, a journalist abducted by Somali pirates, tweeted, Somali pirates gave me toothpaste and soap. <laughs> David Rohde... David Rohde 
A journalist taken by the Taliban said, saw that and replied, the Taliban gave me toothpaste and soap. <laughs> Even Silence of the Lambs Buffalo Bill tweeted, at least I gave my prisoner lotion and a basket. <laughs> but... True story. True story. Yeah, true story. But Trump has a courageous defense of his policies. Those aren't my policies. Because here's what he told Chuck Todd on Sunday. Separation. President Obama, I took over separation. This has been happening long before I got there. What we've done is we've created, we've ended separation. You know, under President Obama, you had separation. I was the one that ended it. Longtime viewers of reality won't be surprised that Donald Trump is lying there because... <laughs> PolitiFact found that family separations were rare during the Obama and Bush administrations and became systematic under Trump's zero-tolerance policy. Mr. President, you're not fooling anybody. We all remember that you ran on a racist anti-immigration platform, and you're still running on it today. At this point, the only family, the only family separation America wants to see is yours from the White House. Plus, <laughs> Trump's deterrence policy might be having the exact opposite effect. Because according to a former ambassador, smugglers are telling migrants they may shut the border. Trump is getting tougher. If you don't go now, you'll never get in. <laughs> Basically, these coyotes are saying America is being put in the Disney vault. <laughs> you don't actually want five copies of The Little Mermaid, but if you don't buy it now, you might never own five copies. <laughs> Trump does have his defenders, uh, like the friendly defenders over at Fox and Defenders. Uh, it's just amazing that these, uh, these uh, news outlets seem to be on the same page of the Democratic talking points. What they say on Sunday all of a sudden is parroted and featured on Monday and Tuesday. And it is, look at how bad these conditions are for kids at the border. Keep in mind, they don't build, they, the Border Patrol wasn't in charge of building a Marriott or a Hyatt. Wow. Hyatt Marriott must really appreciate that. <laughs> In fact, Marriott just changed their slogan to, Marriott, we have soap. <laughs> and as a selling point, the big's a luxury. Oh, yeah. It's a luxury. And Water it's beds. very low. Huh. Warm. And I just got to say, uh, Brian Kilmeade, pump the brakes, my friend. Is that really where you want to draw a distinction between the two political parties? I mean, before you walk into that voting booth and pull a lever for a Democrat, just remember, they want to give soap to children. Now, I'm off to drink myself to sleep, let the darkness swallow me, what have I become? <laughs> now... <laughs> this next story is a real, uh, toe-tapper. Uh, tensions between Trump and Iran continue to escalate, and I'll tell you all about it in our unfortunately ongoing series... America at what? <laughs> Last week, Iran shot down an American drone. In response, Trump ordered a military strike, but then called off the strike at the last minute. Instead, he decided to impose new sanctions on Iran's supreme leader. The assets of Ayatollah Khomeini and his office will not be spared from the sanctions. A harsh response with one small issue. Uh, the Supreme Leader is Ayatollah Khamenei. <laughs> Ayatollah Khomeini has been dead since 1989. <laughs> True. True. We're bringing sanctions against Ayatollah Khomeini, as well as Ottoman Emperor Suleiman the Magnificent, <laughs> and the cruel pharaoh Ramses II, <laughs> with all of his conniving viziers and eunuchs, let my people go. <laughs> also, while sitting there in the Oval, Trump was asked about what the goals of any war with Iran would be. Do you have an exit strategy for Iran if war does break out? Uh, you're not going to need an exit strategy. <laughs> I don't need exit strategies. I mean... 
Our troops will need one, but not me. I'll be fine. What with the bone spurs and everything.